Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Corus. I'm the chair of the Connecticut Port Authority. Thank you all for coming together this afternoon on what is such a, uh, an important moment for the future of the state of Connecticut and southeastern Connecticut in particular. Um, what we will be talking about today is a monumental deal for the state pier in New London, one that will allow it to be transformed into the 21st century facility that we have hoped that it would become for decades. Uh, it will allow us to launch the offshore wind industry here in the state um, and put Connecticut at the ground floor of a new 21st century economy, one that marries environmental action, carbon emissions reduction, with job creation uh, and benefit to uh, the local economy and the regional economy. This is, the, this is what places all over the world are trying to figure out how to do, how to harness the energy of climate action and translate it into local benefit. And this is a fundamental uh, marking point of how we are doing that in Connecticut. Uh, you're going to hear today from the various partners um, that have worked diligently to great end over the last several months uh, to bring this deal to fruition. Uh, you'll note that there are various public stakeholders, various private stakeholders, and uh, the governor mentioned as we walk over here, you know, it really does take a village. And you'll see and you'll hear from all of our partners here above the role that everyone has had. Um, and we're, I think, blessed to have such a great group of individuals, organizations, and companies uh, looking to launch this initiative here in Connecticut, um, and we couldn't be happier. We had a board meeting of the Connecticut Port Authority earlier today at 10 o'clock over at Capital Community College. At that point, we took up uh, multiple resolutions related to the Harbor Development Agreement, and I'm happy to report that they were all approved unanimously. Uh, it's a strong vote of confidence in this administration, uh, in the governor's leadership, in our private partners, and in the direction that we've charted for the future of southeastern Connecticut and the state as a whole with renewable generation at its foundation. Uh, first, I'd like to invite up Eversource Executive Vice President Joe Nolan uh, to speak for one of the private partners. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. On behalf of Eversource and our partner, Orsted, we want to thank Governor Lamont for his leadership around the Port of New London. We can't tell you how excited we are to, to develop a deep water port with heavy lifting capabilities in the Northeast, which really will be the epicenter for wind development uh, up and down really the East Coast. The next port would be down in Norfolk, Virginia. So we're excited to make this investment. Uh, this started, it's been a long journey. Uh, we started about a year ago. Uh, and through the hard work of uh, many folks, we want to recognize uh, Chairman Needleman uh, for his leadership and uh, S Senator Kathy Austin and State Representative Anthony Nolan, uh, my namesake, uh, for their leadership. And then down in New, uh, New London, you know, Mayor Michael uh, Passaro uh, and his uh, economic development chief, uh, Felix Reyes, we're instrumental in bringing this partnership. This, this partnership will bring 400 permanent jobs and, and countless other jobs as we begin to develop uh, and build out our, our wind area, or 4,000 megawatts of clean energy uh, throughout the Northeast. We're very, very excited about it, and we want to thank the state of Connecticut for being such a gracious host. We've done business here for many, many uh, decades, and we were just thrilled to be able to bring our partner, Orsted, uh, from Copenhagen, who is the leader uh, in offshore wind uh, on this journey with us so that we could build out the new London port. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Next, I'd like to acknowledge and invite up to the podium uh, Commissioner Dykes of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Um, environmental protection is such a crucial component of this project, and Commissioner Dykes has been leading the state of Connecticut towards carbon neutrality. Thank you. Thank you, David, for your leadership on this. And I just uh, want to appreciate all the partners that have brought this forward, and especially to Governor Lamont for his leadership on climate change. Uh, his governor's bill, Senate Bill 10, is committing the state to 100 percent zero carbon electric grid by 2040. And we know that that's doable because of projects like the one that's moving forward today. Fighting climate change uh, is about delivering a better future for our kids and our grandkids. And the way that we're doing it is by investing in a modern energy infrastructure that's putting this generation to work in great clean energy jobs. We have tremendous 
uh, advantages in our state with respect to our deep water ports uh, and cities like New London that are going to be part of moving this climate solution forward. Uh, just a few years ago, we thought uh, offshore wind uh, was something uh, that wasn't really ready for the market, that wasn't really affordable yet, that wasn't really uh, something that we could scale as a climate solution. And here we are today. The contracts that are supporting uh, this project moving forward represent 300 megawatts of offshore wind uh, that will be supported by uh, Connecticut uh, families and businesses and delivering 5% of our energy consumption from clean, uh, from re renewable resources. Uh, we're proud that these were the very first offshore wind uh, contracts that were selected uh, by the state of Connecticut just uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, and we're proud to see this next milestone, this next step advancing forward uh, with a clear pathway for advancing and modernizing our port infrastructure. So it's a great day uh, for the state of Connecticut. It's a great day for climate change uh, solutions across the state. And I'm just really proud to be serving an administration that is bringing the parties together to make this a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Next, I'd like to invite up uh, the other uh, key component of the private partnership uh, delivering offshore wind to Connecticut and our neighboring states, Orsted CEO, U.S. Offshore Wind, Thomas Brostrom. Yeah, also, <clears throat> good afternoon and uh, great to be in, uh, be in Hartford today. Uh, so I also want to thank uh, Joe Nolan and the entire Eversource team there. They're a great partner. I want to thank uh, Governor Lamont for his leadership. Uh, New London City, uh, Gateway Terminal, and basically all the state and local partners we have in, uh, in this project. It's been a, a, tr a tremendous journey we've uh, been on. So as I said, uh, my name is Thomas uh, Bostrom, and I'm the CEO of uh, Ørsted in uh, North America. Uh, we are a Danish-based company that is the world leader in offshore wind. We've been at this for several dec decades, building the first wind farm off the coast of Denmark uh, almost 30 years ago. We also the first company who've built uh, the one and only uh, offshore wind project that is spinning the Block Island wind farm off the coast of uh, Rhode, Rhode Island. Um, so together with Eversource, we really aim to set the standard in America for how offshore wind farms are being built and being operated in, in our waters. And the signing of the, of, the, of the Harbor Development Agreement and moving the State Pier project forward it's not only important for Connecticut, but it's also important for the future of our planet. And as a matter of fact, Ørsted as a company, we have a vision uh, that says we want to see a world that run entirely on, on green energy. And like our partner in the state of Connecticut, both Ørsted and Eversource believe taking uh, on climate change is really imperative. Um, additionally, the opportunities for offshore wind to transform the country's energy uh, economy is really immense and it's encouraging to see Connecticut leading the way with one of the most visionary port redevelopment in this country. So the State Peer Project is part of Connecticut's broader clean energy strategy that would drive us towards uh, a green economy, economic development. Um, and local community investment while significantly also reduce greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. In other countries where we do business, we've seen ports completely reshaped by the offshore wind industry while coexisting with other uses of uh, marine life. And we are confident that this project and the offshore wind work coming out of the state pier will put New London uh, on the map for the industry, basically attracting manufacturers and suppliers to choose this region and choose new, the New London uh, region and driving econom uh, economic benefits and growth. So as Joe mentions, we will be utilizing the state pier for our 700, uh, 704 megawatt project, Revolution Wind, as well, for, uh, as well as for other projects in the Northeast that are located in our federal uh, lease areas offshore, uh, south of the coast of New England. Revolution wind, uh, wind will help the state of Connecticut reduce, uh, sorry, reach its clean energy goals affordably as it's purchasing 304 megawatt uh, from the project. That is enough uh, clean energy to power more than 150,000 uh, Connecticut homes with wind power. Uh, and the reduction of carbon emission is equivalent to taking roughly 150,000 cars off the road too. We anticipate that local construction work on the revolution wind um, out of the state pier will begin as early as 21 and we expect the project in operation already in, in 2023. 
So one of the reasons uh, the state peer is so attractive for us is the ability to leverage its existing uh, infrastructure um, and the local highly skilled workforce we have here. The presence of this highly talented workforce and sophisticated uh, manufacturing base will be critical to supporting construction and operations activities for our projects in the years to come. So we are committed to, to building uh, the trades and workforce development in the region, and we, we have committed significant dollars to develop uh, the specialized skills and workforce training programs uh, necessary to support this new maritime uh, industry. So again, I want to salute uh, Governor Lamont and the state uh, for their hard work to finalize the agreement and launching Connecticut's next great maritime uh, industry and we look forward to working with the state and the CPA, uh, the City of New London, Gateway Terminals, to bring our vision uh, to life. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Thomas. I, I want to just add a, a finer point on you know, this partnership that you just heard from between Ersted and Eversource the federal lease areas that they control have the potential to deliver 4,000 megawatts of electricity. Several hundred megawatts have been purchased by Connecticut, several hundred more by Rhode Island, same with New York. As they build out that capacity over time, meeting the energy needs through Department of Energy and Environmental Protection purchases for Connecticut, but also for our neighboring states, New London will be the base of operations for that multi-state uh, initiative. That puts Connecticut in a disproportionately beneficial position, working closely with this private partner as they deliver green power throughout the Northeast. Uh, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal arrangement, and we're blessed to be part of it. Um, next, I'd like to uh, invite up Representative Anthony Nolan uh, from New London's 39th District, uh, the local representative uh, that's been a stalwart supporter of this initiative since day one. Representative? <clears throat> Good afternoon. Finally, <laughs> finally, we're able to move forward uh, for this agreement. And I am just so thankful to first uh, the governor, um, to Orsted, Gateway, Eversource for the communication that you've been able to have through your staff to me to get me to understand. Um, and to talk about how important this is to New London. So I thank you, along with all the other staff that were involved for this well overdue harbor development plan that has finally come to fruition. As we all know, this is a historic agreement. I am grateful to be part of an agreement that will not only benefit the partners standing around, but also the local community of New London by closing the much needed gap on finances for that property, taxes for that property. So I'm so glad to know that we can go home to New London and tell our residents, our constituents, that uh, we have closed that gap a little bit more than ever uh, it has been closed. And it is a great thing uh, for us to be able to go home and say. Um, the benefits of over 350 jobs, and I was corrected earlier when I heard someone say over 400 jobs which is amazing uh, for our local community, um, transforming the pair into a state of the arts facility by expanding the pair property and improving the buildings along with accommodate in the ferry um, and the rails uh, with better connectivity. So finally, we can move in a way to better our state, especially in the southeastern uh, Connecticut area. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't stand here and thank Felix Reyes, our economic development uh, director, and Mayor Passero uh, from the city of New London for his passion to fight hard uh, to get what New London has uh, been neglected from getting for the last several years. So once again, I'm thankful and I appreciate all the work that has been done for this agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Representative, and I, and I just want to add our collective thanks to, to all the hard work you've put in, as well as the rest of the local delegation, the representatives, and, and specifically, of course, 
um, for their work for their region and uh, on the Energy Committee, uh, respectively, Senators Needleman, Senator Summers, Senator Formica, and Senator Austin. Um, the entire delegation has been uh, steadfastly committed to getting what's best for, uh, for the region and marrying uh, green energy with, with economic development. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, one of the great benefits of this program is that the, uh, the public and private investment in this facility that's designed to launch offshore wind over the near term uh, will provide benefit over the long term. Uh, this facility is the public's uh, forever, and we will be the beneficiaries of that for generations to come. I'd like to next invite up our long-term partner in managing that facility, uh, Matthew Satnick from Enstructure, which is the parent company of Gateway, uh, their co-CEO, and our long-term partner in operating the state pier. Yeah. Thank you, David. Uh, on behalf of my co-CEO, Philippe de Montigny, over there, uh, and the entire Gateway team, I'd like to thank our partners, Orsted, Eversource. Um, you guys have been incredible. Uh, the Connecticut Port Authority, Governor Lamont, your administration really stepping in and, and getting this to where we are today has been tremendous. Um, There's a lot of hard work that went into this agreement. There's a lot of thought. There's a lot of listening to the public to understand how do we sort of best effectuate what we know is the best long-term use for the pier, uh, which is now going to be a port and not a pier, and we're, we're thrilled to be part of that as a terminal operator. Um, I'd also like to thank Representative Nolan, uh, Mayor Passero, uh, Felix, Reyes, they've been <clears throat> tremendous in collaborating and welcoming us into New London. Um, we feel like we've formed a really nice partnership there and we look forward to several decades of growth as a terminal operator. Um, over eight months ago, we announced our, our shared vision and um, it clearly has taken a bit longer than we expected to get here. Uh, but, but we see uh, the offshore wind industry as clearly the highest and best use for uh, the, the, the infrastructure in New London uh, and really for the state of Connecticut. Um, we've, we've brought this sort of vision to reality today. Uh, the end result will be well worth it. There'll be job creation beyond just the jobs that were referenced uh, as it relates to the offshore wind industry. We envision a significant ramp up in stevedores and labor, specifically at the terminal, given the activity uh, that is really transformative from what, what the terminal has done historically. Uh, that'll obviously lead to economic growth, and that really would not exist without the offshore wind industry. So uh, it's, a, it's a, a really exciting, you know, secular growth opportunity that we're, we're uh, very much behind. Uh, the redevelopment of the state pier um, does a lot of things. It, it, it enhances, as we, we mentioned, um, sort of the terminal today. There are limitations as a terminal operator, and it comes down to uh, load capacity and storage, and to the extent you don't have that infrastructure, you're limited in the types of commodities that you can handle and the amount of throughput you can bring into the to the port. Uh, we're now going to have those things, and it was the Lamont administration sort of got behind this. I think they recognized that you're investing in an asset, an asset that's state-owned, that ultimately has terminal value. Excuse the pun, but it is the, the reality where this is an asset that, that is going to be enhanced with a significant investment from our partners uh, that will have a cash flow stream coming back to the state. Uh, as private, a private company, we, we, we drool over these opportunities, and we're very excited to be part of it. We think it's absolutely the highest and best use of the terminal. Uh, and we're, we're really thrilled to be part of, of the renewable energy effort and also uh, optimizing, you know, a port that, um, you know, candidly need, needs an investment. Uh, we think it's obviously going to be incredibly beneficial for the city of New London and, and the state uh, more broadly. Um, the, the last, last but not least, I, I do want to just say David Corris has been uh, truly um, tremendous and, and uh, critical in getting us to this place. Um, there were a lot of parties involved um, when you think about the combination of a public Danish company, a public utility, a private company, state agencies, Connecticut Port Authority. Uh, there were a lot of moving pieces, and it took uh, a real champion to get here, and that champion is David Corris. And so we. <laughs> we, we appreciate you very much. Um, and lastly, just want to thank everybody for the endorsement of, of Gateway. Um, 
we're, as the co-CEO of Instructure, we're the parent company. We have terminals uh, throughout the country. Uh, we take our job very seriously, and we feel uh, very passionate that this is going to be a great outcome for New London and for the state of Connecticut. So thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, and thank you so much uh, personally. Um, as folks are aware, the Lamont administration has taken an active role in this project over the last uh, several months, really, since taking office, uh, making sure that it emerges in a way that um, really respects the public interest and brings the greatest amount of benefit to the state. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, Deputy uh, Chief of Staff and COO Paul Mounts for his direct involvement. Uh, over these months, um, as well as the, the many folks who have participated from the Office of Policy and Management, Department of Administrative Services, Department of Transportation, et cetera, uh, the point person for the administration uh, to whom we could also not be here without uh, is OPM Deputy Secretary uh, Costa Diamantes, and I'd like to invite Costa up to speak on behalf of the state. Well, thank you all, and I appreciate you all being here, and certainly Governor Lamont for um, having us participate in this project so that we can bring it forward. It was definitely a team effort. It is a village. Uh, you just heard the number of parties that were involved, and it did take us a little longer to bring it back. The governor sent us on a mission to see what this project looked like and what changes needed to occur with this project, if there needed to be changes, uh, to bring about the most cost effectiveness to the project and the largest amount of economic development for the project. There was two components to this. Uh, first, of course, being the project that we brought forward, which was the wind project and delivery of power. The other is, of course, the development of our peer. And the third is the economic development that's involved and what can be generated from this project going forward the way it is. There's been some significant changes to the project, one of which uh, the original was the largest ship probably ever built, approximately 580 feet long, if I'm correct, and roughly 140 feet, 150 feet wide, uh, and where it was going to be docked in this pier. And based on some design changes and, yes, some cost changes, it was the most effective use of the area to see it going forward for generations. And it did take a team, and I'd like to acknowledge for a moment the people that I've worked with and new friends that I've made besides our friends at Eversource and, and Orsted. Of course, uh, Michael Sear, who's here, who, by the way, we've battled with representing Eversource six hours a day, five days a week for many months, along with our friend Francis uh, Slingsby, who's not here, unfortunately. He was the other gentleman in the room with us always. Some others in the audience, Olivia, Glenn, Paul, Kevin Kopes from DAS, Peter Simmons, Todd Lucas. We're talking about five days a week, six, seven, eight hours a day, weekends included for months. And yes, it's delayed the project a bit, but it was for the right reasons to ensure appropriate project costs and ensure the right project for the state of Connecticut. And thank you all for the team and the new friends we've made through this endeavor, even though I threw a few things along the way. Um, but we actually have the best project on the east coast of the United States, and we will be a premier port on schedule and on time. Thank you, Casa. And, and finally, um, I want to thank the governor for his leadership throughout this effort, um, continually and consistently understanding the importance and the potential uh, that this possesses for the future of southeastern Connecticut in the state and thank him for the confidence that he's uh, placed in me in my role at the Port Authority and invite him up to say a few words. Well, thank you, David, and, and you earned that uh, confidence. And um, Anthony, you said finally. Yeah, finally, this took a while. Uh, I'm finding in the state it's not easy uh, getting people around rebuilding 100-year-old infrastructure. It takes, uh, it, it takes a lot of different players here, and, um, and we had a lot of players. You've heard them all introduced. I am so proud of the partners we got here with uh, Gateway and Eversource and Orsted and, um, and the Nolan brothers, Anthony and Joe. Um, uh, we've gotten to know each other uh, pretty well through um, the ups and downs of a, of a very complicated um, uh, transaction, and uh, I've spent my life uh, working on transactions, and um, this is one that we got right. It took us a little longer than we thought. We had a lot of players involved, a lot of stakeholders, but we got it right. First of all, uh, we got it right 
for the city of New London. Uh, New London, that port has, um, let's say, been underutilized uh, for uh, a long time. That pier is uh, well over 100 years old. They have stopped and started trying to get a rebuild going there, certainly since the 60s, Costa told me. And now I know why. It's a complicated deal. And uh, we got that deal done. As Acosta said, it ch it's changed a little bit over the last nine months, and we can talk about that. But one of the things I want to do, if we're going to make this investment, and we make this investment as a public-private partnership with the Orsted Eversource Joint Venture, we're doing this together, Gateway operating it. I wanted to make sure we didn't just build it so that it would be great for wind power for the next 10 years, but that New London was going to be a world-class port for the next 100 years. And that's what this pier does. This pier allows us to greatly accelerate uh, um, maritime traffic in and out, navi um, interconnecting now with the rail service uh, coming in. And this is what the future of the state of Connecticut is, is we um, try and enhance our, uh, our port authorities. And that's what we're trying to do here with this effort. Uh, let me tell you what this means in terms of uh, Connecticut. Look, our, uh, our energy portfolio, is, is, as Katie was pointing out, is changing. And, uh, you know, early we've got a millstone right down the way. They've been uh, producing uh, carbon-free power for us for, you know, uh, well over a generation. They're not going to be there um, um, that much longer, just given on the timing of the infrastructure there. So we've got to think about a renewable, carbon-free future. And wind power is our future. Connecticut can be the Saudi Arabia of wind power, offshore wind, generating power at a, at a cost that's very, very economical with everything else and a price that's coming down dramatically. And what that means to our state now and what that means to our kids is uh, so important. Other stakeholders we had to work with on this deal were the, um, our fellow states, my fellow governors. I mean, it's, it's great to do this, you know, one-off deal, one-off deal. We're a small state. When we work in conjunction with our regional states, we can get a very good pricing, real economies. And at some point, um, you know, Orsted Eversource, I'd like to see us maybe producing more of a, um, not just uh, assembling uh, the wind turbines here, but producing more of it and making this really a hub for the entire Northeast, because that's how important this state peer deal could be in terms of transforming um, New London and transforming our state. This is a peer which, uh, as you heard pointed out, we work it together um, for the wind power uh, over the next 10 years on a lease agreement. But at the end of the day, we own this pier. We own our future. And what this means in terms of transportation for the entire Northeast Corridor with Connecticut right at the heart of that future is why we're all here today. And I just want to, you know, end where we started, finally. And uh, I couldn't have done it, you know, without each and every one of you. And some considerable patience, I got to say. Um, you know, the back and forth and this is tough. And um, I get to give a speech. And now Costa's got to deliver the goods. And, uh, and that means we get this thing done on time and under budget so people can count on it. So our partners here know what they can uh, count on coming to expect. And uh, that's something we're going to hold people's feet to the fire to get it done. Thank you all for being here. I want to mention the rest of the team real quick uh, before, we, uh, before we move on. Um, Jeff from Eversource, Joe from Port Authority, Andrew from Port Authority, Cassandra. I don't think we missed anyone else, right? Uh, Glenn and, and, and Adam uh, from, uh, from Robinson and Cole. Uh, it has been an absolute team effort. Uh, we're going to bring everyone up for a quick uh, photo op and then uh, take some questions. Two quick photos and then take the Questions? Yeah. And David 
for Governor Lamont, whoever wants to take this one. I don't want to put words into your mouth, but for constituents or for lawmakers who have said this was too rushed, there wasn't enough input. I'm hearing finally a lot. Would that be your response to that feedback? Yeah, I mean, certainly I, I can say that this has been ongoing for some time. And, um, you know, unlike many uh, projects that take place in the public sector, there has been robust opportunity for input, for questions, and for response. Uh, we discussed this at every Port Authority board meeting with two opportunities for comment at each. Uh, we, hold, we held a special informational forum for it in September in New London. And, and frankly, much of what has gone on over the last few months have been amendments to the project scope in response to what we heard from the public. Um, so I, I think that this demonstrates that the process is working. Yeah, too rushed. I'm just the opposite. What the heck took so long? You know, I've been doing, doing this nonstop with David and the team for a year. This thing started well before I got here. We inherited some things. And, um, you know, as I said before, they've been trying to do this certainly since the 1960s. So uh, I don't want to wait any longer. I don't need any more studies. I don't need any more blue uh, panel commissions. I, I think now is the time for us to act. Now is the time for us to get this uh, state pier uh, in the harbor of New London, everything it can be. The legislature, I don't think, was aware of this until Saturday. Could you talk a little bit about the transparency of this and uh, the amount of money that's involved for the state and, and, and the uh, informing legislators and others about I'll start it. talking about the process. I mean, we've had numerous public hearings on this. Uh, we have, um, you know, we briefed all the leaders. We briefed the legislators. Uh, certainly, as the deal got narrower and narrower with more and more specifics, um, they, people have had a time to opine on it. They voted. They voted unanimously. The leaders, uh, you know, Republican representatives on the Port Authority Board uh, voted to ratify this as well and support it because they think it's the right thing to do. I don't think... Um, Look, and we're here to answer any questions in the name of transparency. I'm, I'm proud of the deal we've got. I've got the folks here who can go through the numbers and um, the assumptions we have behind those numbers, and uh, we'll be here uh, till the cows come home. I want to give you confidence that we are here to tell you everything we can about this deal, why we think we made the right decision, why it's in the best interest of our state. So, can you tell the Connecticut repairs how much more per kilowatt hour they're going to pay for the electricity generated from this 300 megawatt project? And if not, why not? Uh, I don't have that with me today, but happy to follow up with you. Uh, these contracts have been moving through the PURA approval uh, process. The contracts are approved, and I just have to check in terms of whether we're beyond the uh, time period when we can release those numbers. I will say but 300 we know, megawatts represents what of our power usage? It's, About it's 5 percent of Connecticut's uh, energy supply. And so, of course, in terms of uh, meeting our climate goals, we know that these prices have been coming down. We've been getting great pricing just by virtue of using competitive RFPs to secure and compare bids from across uh, a range of different companies. And so that's uh, what that process is what resulted in the selection of these projects today. That it's not a public number right now. It's never been made public. No, my know. answer was that I am happy to follow up with you and provide you uh, that information. I have to check on the status. I don't have it with me today. Ah, this is the previous bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have done multiple RFPs over the last uh, two and a half years for offshore wind uh, resources and other types of resources. Uh, and the project that's moving forward today associated with the peer development uh, is backstopped by two contracts representing a cumulative 300 megawatts with Orsted and Eversource. And so those contracts have been approved. I'm happy to follow up offline to provide an information that can be shared uh, on those. And then we also have have another RFP that we announced the results of in December of 2019 with a different project. Uh, and so those project, those contracts are moving forward for consideration by the Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. So someone on your staff told me it's not a publicly disclosable number, the amount that ratepayers will pay for these total hours. They were wrong and you're going to be able to make it public. No, what I'm saying is I don't have the answer to your question but I'm happy to follow up right after to provide you the, what information we can share. The information when we receive these bids through a competitive process in order to attract really highly competitive bids, of course, there's a lot of competition in this industry. 
the bidders consider those the pricing to be uh, competitive and trade secret information. So we respect the confidentiality confidentiality of that information through the uh, Pura review process in a 90-day period afterwards. The quasi-public <coughs> model in general. It seems like every five years or so, whether it's the legislature or the union, somebody says they just don't like the quasi-public model that we should just have state departments. So not necessarily in the context of the CPA, but just in general. Are you comfortable with the, the quasi-public uh, model that we have in Connecticut, or do you think we'd be better off just having I, I like the quasi-model as, as long as you make it right. And the people that complain don't want us to go to DOT either because they think uh, that's not uh, the most audited, efficient thing. Look, the quasis um, give us um, room to put together partnerships like this. Uh, the quasis um, are innovative and nimble in terms of what we got to do. Um, but we've got some problems with the quasis, and uh, not with all of them, but with several of them. And I'll be blunt, the Port Authority was one of those problems. And, uh, and we're addressing that. Um, you know, Paul Mounds is taking the lead on what we're doing, the quasis in general here. Obviously, as you know, we, um, we had a new chairman came on board, Davis, of uh, um, course, as soon as I uh, got here, or very soon thereafter, to take care. We got Melissa came on over at OPM to make sure, in terms of financial accountability, they have uh, reporting mechanisms on a regular basis to give people confidence that every dollar is being well spent. We're trying to make all the quasis have similar recording, reporting requirements so that we can standardize this. I feel very strongly in terms of um, uh, the people we attract to go on these boards should be a big advantage for the quasis. And uh, you know, right now, uh, we're not always uh, making sure that people have the uh, industry expertise in order to turn that um, a board into a place where it's a real resource going forward. So we're going to continue to make the changes in the boards of these quasis. And frankly, I've got to work with legislative leaders on both sides of the aisle because they have a role in making these appointments. So we have the right people there to provide the oversight uh, going forward. Are you going to have any sort of legislative proposals for how to improve quasi publication going forward? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as you probably remember, Christine, it was what, six months ago or something when Port Authority was uh, uh, getting a lot of heat, so we started thinking about uh, the quasi-structure. What's the best way to standardize this? Do we do it in-house or out-of-house? And um, Paul is the guy taking the lead on that, working with the legislative leadership, primarily to make sure that the quasis operate within some rules and regs that we oversee. And uh, these are rules and regs that are in terms of financial reporting and ethics and appointments. Make sure that we standardize that in the process to give people confidence that they're operating in the best interests of all of us. Will there be any sort of public reporting of that, of, of what Mr. Mounds has been doing? Yes, absolutely. It, um, since the state appears to be on the hook now for the overruns of the state fair project, um, and there was a study done by an international marine engineering firm in 2018 for the Port Authority estimating this project to cost twice what it's now being termed, uh, characterized as today, um, are you worried about that? The, the, that tremendous difference in price between the 300 estimates? No, I have a great deal of confidence. I'll let David handle this in a second. Um, uh, Costa and David, they've gone over these numbers tight. We've got a, build, a big contingency in there. And more importantly, we control the design, we control the build. That's why the costs are on us, and we've got to deliver these goods in a serious way. I know, I don't, I, I, ideally, in my world, I don't take the downside risk or all the downside risk. In this case, we control the design and build that's appropriate. Assurances that the Port Authority will release those estimates without an FOI battle, that they'll make them available publicly? Let, let, let me speak to the document you're talking about, uh, David, because you, you've taken a document out of context. There was a, a cost estimate prepared by our engineers in 2018, which represented the grand total of all the possible improvements that could be made to State Pier, which was articulated to those bidding on the concession agreement. And that's what you've cited with this dollar amount. We're not doing every single thing that could possibly be done to state pier we are doing the collection of projects that is perfectly honed to meet the needs of the next 10 years and us going forward and so the estimates that we have now you, you've cited this 
global engineering firm, which we retain under contract. And they've done peer review cost estimating of our other design team. We actually have multiple design firms engaged. And so we are very confident that our cost estimates are more valid than a document that was prepared for a very different purpose several years ago. And so you make those available, those, those estimates, those cost estimates? The budget documents are in the, uh, are in the agreements, which will be made available. We should also know that the uh, budget estimates that we're creating now, we've done so with our team from DAS and Construction Services. So I'm not, I'm not familiar with the document we're referring to, but I am very familiar with this particular project. And it's a $157 million project. There are no overruns in this project, and there won't be uh, change orders in this project unless those that are required as a result of a deficiency in a design doc, which we hope does not occur. But this is a $157 million project. I heard someone say at one point 300 million or some ridiculous number. It's $157 million. That's what we're looking to build up to and, and to complete our process. Our um, assistant director of project management is here and a project manager is here, Kevin Kopetz, who's in charge of procurement and legal. So we have a team, we have a number that's real. Any other number people are floating around are irrelevant. Another question or two for folks who haven't had a chance yet. It will be. It will be posted later today on the governor's website. The governor's page. Uh, and linked through from the uh, Port Authority page as well. One other? Great. Thank you Thanks, all everybody. for coming. Thank you, Governor, so much.